when we spread thoughts of goodwill to all beings, what kind of thoughts are we spreading? We're not wishing that everybody runs around with a big grin on their face. We're wishing that people find well-being. One of the Buddha's phrases is, may all beings look after themselves with ease. Another is, may no beings despise anyone or mistreat anyone. In other words, we're hoping that people will understand the causes for true happiness generosity, virtue, meditation, and act on them. Now that may bear very little resemblance to the world as we see it, but we do this first for our own sake and first for the, and then for the sake of other beings. For our own sake, wishing goodwill to all beings gets us out of our own stories. There's so much suffering in the world that comes simply from the way people talk to themselves. So-and-so did this to me, did that to me, I did that, and then they did that in return. So they spread out a little bit and look at the mistreatment around them. We can get upset by that, obsessed with that. And so one of the reasons we spread these thoughts is to get us out of those narratives. And get out of ourselves a bit. Think about the Buddha on the night of his awakening. First he was thinking about his own past lives, back many, many aeons. And he realized that simply looking at his own narratives, there was a lot that he didn't understand. Sometimes good actions seemed to lead to bad results, sometimes bad actions lead, led to good results. Sometimes there seemed to be no immediate result. It was because the perspective was too narrow. It was in the second knowledge of his, the evening of his awakening, that he saw the larger picture, thinking of all beings. And that's when the pattern became clear. When you act on skillful intentions with right view, the results are going to be good. The results may come slowly, but they're going to come. You act on bad intentions unskillful intentions, with wrong view, believing that your actions don't matter, then the results are going to be bad. And it was seeing that larger pattern that it was able to come into the present moment and watch his mind. So he spread thoughts of goodwill to see the larger picture. And then from that larger picture, we look at ourselves. Are we living in such a way that would be conducive to the true happiness of other beings? If not, what well, we can, can we change? The purpose of this is, on the one hand, to give you a sense of well-being, that you have that generosity of spirit that's not concerned only for your own welfare, you're concerned for the welfare of others. But it's also to remind you, happiness comes from actions, well-being comes from actions. And however we may define happiness, we want to make sure that our quest for happiness doesn't cause any harm to anybody else. That's when we're being responsible. 
in the Buddha's teaching on goodwill, he starts out by saying, you should live a life where you're not oppressing others. Live a life where you're easy to talk to. In other words, when people see that you've done something wrong, you take criticism well. You try not to be a burden on others. In other words, you take that larger picture and then look at yourself in that framework and see where you're causing unnecessary suffering and unnecessary harm to yourself and to other beings. That's really good for getting outside of your narratives, because the narratives can wear you down. Because what is a narrative of life? When the Buddha remembered his previous lifetimes, it was being born. He had this name, this appearance, this experience of pleasure, this experience of pain, this kind of food. Then he died. That's pretty much it. Birth, eating, pleasure, pain, death. When you read biographies, that's where they all end. But the principle of action doesn't end with death. It goes on. And so when you identify with that larger principle, that you want to act on skillful intentions all the time, that can give you a sense of mission. And then you ask yourself, how can you do that? Where are you going to look for happiness in a way that doesn't harm anybody? Well, it's got to be inside. By the way you train your mind. Because so much of our experience is shaped by the mind. The input that comes in from the senses, that's just raw material. It's like the food in our garden. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But the way we fix the food is going to make all the difference in the world as to whether it's actually good to eat or not. A really good cook can take something that's even a little bit old and rotten and turn it into good food. An inept cook can take really good ingredients and turn them into garbage. So it's the way your mind approaches things. That's going to make all the difference. And that's what we can train. If you can find happiness in changing the mind's habits, you're finding happiness in something that's harmless. You're setting a good example for others. And then as you face aging, illness, and death, you've got the tools you need to not suffer. And when you're not suffering from those things, you're placing less and less of a burden on others. Otherwise people will see you suffering, and as things get worse, they realize there's nothing much they can do. When I was in Thailand, I'd sometimes read the books they would hand out at funerals. This is a custom they have there. When someone passes away, they'll print a book in honor of that person. Sometimes it's a Dharma book, sometimes a book on something else. And they'll have a little biography at the front. And the biography's always ended the same way. So-and-so started out having little symptoms of an illness here and there, and first the doctors were able to take care of it. The doctors did their best, and they finally reached the point where the doctors couldn't help at all. They threw up their hands. The family was there. No matter what they could do, there's nothing they could do to reach in and take the pain of that person and make it less. And when you see the person suffering a lot, it really tears at your heart. So taking care of your own mind is a gift not only to yourself, but also to the people around you. 
They talk of the famous Sachans dying extremely peacefully. not burdening anybody else with their suffering, because they learn how not to suffer from whatever can happen to the body, whatever happened to the mind. And so as you train the mind, it's, it's a very high-level expression of goodwill for all beings. Because the common pattern of the world is people suffer and then they let their suffering spill out all over other, all over the place. But if we can take care of business inside, then there's no need for suffering. So the thoughts of goodwill are not simply the nice pink clouds that we send out. They're not wishful thinking. We're not expecting that all beings will be happy. The Buddha was one time asked, is everybody going to gain awakening, or only half the world, or a third of the world? He didn't answer. Because he knew it was up to individual people to follow the path. Ananda was standing by. He was afraid that the person who asked the question would get upset because the Buddha was not answering. So he pulled the person aside. He said it was like a wise gatekeeper looking after a fortress. And he walks around the fortress and doesn't see a hole big enough for even a cat to slip through anywhere except for the gate. And so the conclusion he comes to, he doesn't know how many people are going to come in and out of the gate, but he does know if they're going to enter the fortress on foot they have to go through the gate. In the same way, the Buddha saw that by training the mind, people would gain happiness. So that's our wish, that people will train their minds. Find a sense of well-being that causes no harm to anybody. In other words, it's happiness and goodness at the same time. This is not simply a lack of harm, it, part of the path depends on generosity. As the Buddha said, nobody gets into nirvana if they're stingy. So we're working on a happiness that goes together with goodness. And a happiness that doesn't conflict with anyone else's true happiness. When you can think that thought, it's a happy thought right there. And then you don't stop with a happy thought, you act on it. That way the goodness spreads around. Instead of spilling out a lot of suffering in the world, we spill out our goodness. That's our gift to everybody, ourselves included.